Hi, I'm Sean Warren with Sean Warren Fine Art, and today I'm going to do my very first review on this Smart Art Box project right here, which is a, a Pablo Picasso style Cubist painting. If you're not familiar with Smart Art Box, it's a monthly subscription. It runs about $45 to $50 a month, um, depending. You can get discounts here and there, so I, I think I received a 10% discount on mine. I'm not paid by Smart Art Box, so these are entirely my own opinions. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to try out some new medium and uh, do some projects that you haven't tried before. So I think it's a really great way to just kind of broaden your experience. The kit came with five PBO oil markers, an 8x10 canvas, a small bottle of Gamsol odorless mineral spirits, and a brush. It also came with step-by-step -step instructions on how to create a Cubist-inspired painting. Included was a biography on Pablo Picasso and a history of the Cubist movement. The instructions suggest sketching your subject from several different angles. I looked around my house and I couldn't really find anything that I thought was interesting to sketch. I couldn't really find something that I thought would look cool and interesting from different angles that would make you know uh, an interesting painting so I went to my sketchbook and I found a sketch that I had done several years ago I've actually done some cubist style face paintings before in oil and I found a sketch that I had not uh, done yet so I was waiting to do that because this particular one had more line work than some of the others that I've already done so I was waiting for an opportunity and I did have it in my mind that I would like to use some kind of an oil marker for the project. So this Cubist inspired smart art box came at just the right time for me. So let's see what I came up with. Here's the smart art box. This is the brochure with instructions in history. And it came with a set of five PBO markers. And they were the, th the medium width. Gamsol, which I love, I use that anyway. And a synthetic hog hair brush. And an 8x10 canvas. So I traced my drawing onto a 9x12 canvas. I didn't use the one that came in the box because my drawing was already 9 by 12. I sprayed it with the fixative so that the pencil would not bleed into the paint. So I've put on a layer of yellow and now you're seeing me put on red and I'm going to blend it with the Gamsol which I've put into a little dish. So I'm just adding the odorless mineral spirits as I go. I'm not adding any more paint. I'm just adding and blending as I go down. It blended pretty nicely. I noticed that there were a lot of brush strokes. So you'll see in a later step that I go through with my blendy brush and blend it in. So right now I'm just covering. You do need to shake them really well before you use them. And then I primed it on a paper plate to get it flowing. Those are my blendy brushes. I have a big one and a small one. Actually, I have several sizes, but on this painting, I used a big one and a small one. This is a makeup brush. I don't use regular paint brushes that are made for blending because they shed, but I find that makeup brushes work really well. And I usually get them at the dollar store or at a discount store. So now I'm continuing in that same uh, yellow orange color down in the corner there. This I'm doing directly on the canvas and then blending it a little, not blending it, but it was a little thick so I'm spreading it around with odorless mineral spirits. And then there's the white. I'm going to mix the next color with white and blue. So you can either use it directly on the canvas or you can mix it on a paper plate and use it on top. This is the green. I should have used a bigger brush on here. It ended up drying 
before I was able to blend it. So when I went to blend it, it lifted a lot of it off. It was just kind of sticky, similar to the way an acrylic paint gets when you try to blend it after it started to dry. So I attempted to blend it, but it, it lifted a lot of the color off. So I wasn't super happy with that. That What I learned from that was that you need to be quick about putting it on there and blend it while it's still fairly wet. The drying time for this is five to 15 minutes. So it is a little more drying time than what you would get with acrylics. It's very opaque. It covered very well. I like that uh, acrylics is acrylics don't cover as well. This most of the time covered in one coat. There are a couple of places where you see I will go over and put another coat on, but for the most part, it covered in one coat. I used several of my own brushes. That little bristle brush that came with the kit was actually a little stiff for me. I preferred a little uh, bit softer brush and the ones I'm using there are the silver satin brushes and the Simply Simmons. Those are my favorite brushes right now. The Simply Simmons are, are great for an inexpensive brush. There I'm blending out another layer of the green. I put the green on again over it and blending it out again. I really like the way that you, you can use these uh, to paint with it. It's really handy to be able to use it like a marker, which it is, but it's also oil paint. So it, it smells quite a bit. It does have an odor, so keep that in mind if that's something that bothers you. Some of these little details I would not have been able to accomplish easily had I used a regular paintbrush. This was really a fun project. It was like an adult coloring session. That, I failed to prime it on the paper plate first so you can see it's pretty juicy. If you, if you punch the tip down on your canvas, you're liable to get a big puddle. And I noticed the more I worked, as I got toward the end of the project, they were not nearly as juicy. And the yellow, I'm not sure if I was running out of yellow or if it was clogged or what the situation was, but I was, I was having trouble getting yellow paint out and it still felt like there was paint inside of the marker. Notice how I continually turn the canvas. I turn it so that I'm able to get a straight line at the best angle. Sorry about the headshot. I'm just learning to get my video set up properly. So just bear, bear with me, it'll get better. <laughs> So I've put the yellow on first and now I'm putting green on top of it and I'm working much more quickly here than I did on the lighter green color. My audio voiceover is not as nice as I would like either. I bought a mic, a USB mic to use and apparently it doesn't work so I am using my headset right now which makes me sound like I have a stuffy nose so again just bear with me I'm I'm working on the technical issues and will improve my audio and my video as I'm able to do that That works really well for that little area. It's the small areas it works pretty good on. And the tip, the, the markers come in three different tips and I believe this is the medium tip. It is, let's see, it says four millimeter. So one thing I wish is that I would have had more colors. 
I wasn't able to get a nice purple color, of course, um, by mixing blue and red, which is predictable. Uh, it's very hard to mix a nice purple color. I looked on, uh, I believe it was Dick Blick website, and they do come in different colors. There's not a, a large selection of colors, but there are probably three or four colors that were available that I would use, like burnt sienna. I would have preferred to have a green too that I didn't have to mix. I would have liked a purple and a magenta color. I wasn't worried about going over the details. I went over my little details uh, with white paint, so they're covered up, but I referred to my drawing later on in the video and put those details back in. Notice how opaque it is. Compared to acrylic paint, it, it's quite opaque. It dries in about 10 minutes, I would say, but it's there's a stickiness to it for quite a while. So I had to be real careful where I set my hand, and halfway through it, I did get up and take a break, and then I came back and finished. Uh, there was just, I was running out of places to put my hand. I didn't want to end up smudging something. So this is the fun part. This is my favorite part, is putting in the black outlines. And it just really makes it pop. Until you get, there's in the, get those in there, it's kind of, uh, kind of ho-hum, but once you get those lines in there, it just really makes it pop. And I will put my traceable image in the description below so you can download that if you would like to use my artwork that is fine it's artwork that I created so there's no copyright and you are welcome to use it I was inspired by painter Michael Lang and you can watch his videos on YouTube I like painting realism, but as far as what I hang up on my walls in my home, I prefer abstract art. I just like color and really creative compositions, but I'm, I'm very drawn to color. I've done several of these paintings before. I have used an oil marker for the outlining previously. The paintings I did prior to this were larger, so the tip was a little more appropriate. I feel that this tip is a little wide for this application. My my lines are pretty wide on here, and I, I would have preferred, I believe, a, a little bit thinner tip, especially for some of those detail areas like the black scallop. And I would not recommend using a straight edge or a curve on here. The paint tends to bleed underneath of your ruler. So I just freehand it. I have used a ruler on some of my other paintings. You have to put a little bit of tape on the underside of the ruler to raise it up from the surface and if you do that you you can do it pretty successfully to, if you if you would like some straighter edges i i would not use a template for the circles i think that would bleed quite a bit and it'd be more difficult but you can give it a try and again notice how i continually rotate the canvas so i'm in the best position to make my lines This painting took me about two hours to complete, not including tracing the image. I used regular graphite carbon paper. And then I went over it with a pencil as well, just to make sure that it didn't lift. I started up in the upper right-hand corner, or the upper left-hand corner with yellow, and then I realized that I had not sprayed on the fixative yet. My pencil was starting to smudge, so I had to go spray it real quick. These are just really enjoyable paintings. This was my first art box. I'm looking forward um, to 
to do one every month and do a review for all of you every month. So here's where I'm referring to my drawing and I'm putting in some of the details that I've painted over. And here we have the finished painting. I, I did add a few details that are not shown on the video. It was a very fun project. I like the colors. I like the consistency of the paint and how easy and fun and relaxing it was to do this project. I would love to see your Smart Art Box creation. Check the description below for a link to my Facebook page where you can share yours today. Until next time, happy painting.